Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Look to your neighbor and say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Now look to your other neighbor and say, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Brother and Sister Foster, it is great to see you. God bless you. It is great to see you. Amen. First off, we'd like to welcome everyone here today. Welcome all of our visitors. It's great to see you, have you here at First Pentecostal. When, uh, this week, when I was reading through some things, I want to cover a verse here real quick. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5, it says, Al thou... As thou knowest not what is in the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not thy works of God who maketh all. See, the, the easy version, sometimes I have to go to the easy version to break it down just a little bit for me. It says this, it says, nobody, or it says, nobody can explain the things that God does. So do not be surprised about what he does Remember that God made the world. See, there are times where we say, you know what? I don't know why God does what he does. And we say, I don't know why this may be happening. But what we can say is that God created the world. And even though what, is going, what, what he does is beyond our earthly thinking, and what's going on in this world may be on our own comprehension, we can take peace and find peace in that the God that made this world, that made you and me, loves us and is with us everywhere we go. He goes before us, he stands beside us, and he's always behind us everywhere we go. So yeah, we may not understand the way, reason why things are happening, but when we stand up and say, as for us, I will serve the Lord. For me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Just know and have comfort that God is with you wherever you go. Praise the Lord. We welcome you here to First Pentecostal today. We just ask that you just worship with our praise team today as they lead us into worship. Hallelujah.
the only thing that keeps us from the blessings of God are not the circumstances in our lives it's not God himself it's our willingness to say yes to what he wants to give us sometimes the only thing keeping us from the blessings of God is just us saying yes hallelujah hallelujah oh he is a great God you may be seated. We have a few ministry updates. First off, on June 1st, we have ladies' prayer. And on June 4th, this Friday, we have the Section 1 Youth Rally here. And it is at 7, uh, 7 p.m. is going to be prayer. 7.30 is the service. Uh, that is open to everyone. Everyone. Uh, it'll be a great time. On June 20th, we have a very special day. 
Father's Day. Uh, June 13th, a leadership meeting. It's going to be after service at 6 o'clock. And then, uh, again, June 15th, we have ladies' prayer. Uh, June 20th is the fourth Sunday, and we have evangelist Jonathan Hudson, who will be with us that night, or that day and night. So praise the Lord. We are absolutely looking forward to having him here. And then finally, on June 30th, we have a very special night. Uh, this is the family night, and everyone is going to be in the sanctuary. So there'll be no JFK or Anthem that night, but we're going to be having a family night here on that Wednesday night, June 30th. So uh, quite a few updates there. Uh, right now, we're just going to go to the Lord in offering. Uh, we have multiple ways that you can give if the if the ushers would come forward with the offering plates. We have the good old-fashioned offering plates that we can use. We are also uh, have embraced technology. and You can text to give. You can use our app to give. Uh, you can, we have a machine back there. If you want to uh, use your card, we just ask if you do that, please make sure that you fill out a form and put it in the offering plate to know uh, where it's going to, who it's from. Uh, so uh, right now, we're just going to pray over the offering. Lord, we just thank you, God, for all you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for your blessings. I ask you, God, to bless this offering. I ask you to bless the giver, Lord. I ask you to just bless it, turn it for your kingdom, and help us to use it, Lord, in a way that will expand your word and expand your kingdom, Lord, and we reach people. We just thank you for all you've done and all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have an offering, you you can bring that up. And, and while that's happening, we're also going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we have many, many needs in this church. Uh, first, we just want to remember our associate pastor, uh, Brother Hernandez. He is home. We praise God for that. We're just praying for a speedy recovery. Uh, so let's remember him in our prayers. If you have a need, please just raise your hand. Uh, God knows. God will take care of these. Uh, so we just thank the Lord for this. Uh, Lord, we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer right now for these needs, Lord. We just ask you, God, right now, Lord, to be with the needs in this house, Lord. Lord, you see those who are hurting, God. You see those who need a blessing, God. Lord, you see those who need a healing, God. Lord, I ask you to take care of these needs, Lord, according to your will, God, according to your glory, Lord. You said where there are two or more agreeing in your name, there you are in the midst, God. Lord, we know you're here, God. We know you're, you're, you're here. We're believing, Lord, that you will take care of our needs, God. I ask you, Lord, to be with our associate pastor, God. I ask for a speedy healing, God, a speedy recovery, Lord. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to provide him strength, Lord. We just thank you for him, God. We just thank you, Lord, for this family, God. Lord, just thank you, Lord, for everything, God. Lord, I ask you, God, to just continue, Lord, to bless our church, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for all you've done, God, and all you're going to do and all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we would like our first family to come forward. Uh, and then the Richardson family will be receiving the mantle. This is a very important part of our service. In this part, we are going to pray the Lord's protection, not only on our pastor, but his family. We know that a lot of time the adversary doesn't just like to attack the man of God, but he goes for the other places like his family. So we're just going to pray that the Lord keeps our pastor and his family safe and good health. Lord, we just thank you, God, Lord, for bringing the, the Hanscom family here today, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for the blessing and the burden that you've put on their hearts, God, for this place here in Jacksonville, God. 
And Lord, I thank you even more, Lord, that they are honoring that burden to be here today, God. And Lord, I ask you, God, to just put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. I ask you, God, to just keep them in health, Lord. I rebuke sickness in Jesus' name. I rebuke any anything, Lord, that comes against them in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you, God, to bless them, Lord. Honor their sacrifices, God. Go before them, Lord, throughout this time, God. And Lord, I ask you, God, to just keep them, Lord. Keep their family safe, God. Lord, we just thank you for all you've done. We thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace, God. We just love you, Lord, and praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. And we are believing, Lord, that you will have your hand on them, Lord, and that you will be with them, God, throughout this time, Lord. We just thank you, God, Lord, for all you've done. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, my God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. At this time, it ain't over. At this time, we're going to bring the praise team back up here. Or they're still up here already. So the praise team is going to lead us into some more worship. Just worship God with them in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can feel it or not, but there's, there's a current that's flowing in this place today. There's a current. You don't need to be worried. You need to step out in that, in that current. Hallelujah. You need to let the Holy Ghost have his way in your heart right now. Hallelujah. Shaka tamamabo, shaka haya tamahaya. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I know the way through trouble. Yeah. I think Hallelujah. I feel a miracle. Hallelujah. My God gave me a promise and it yeah. won't stop now. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I want my elders to come and stand across the front here. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want my elders to come and stand across the front. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Baylin, come on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right, elders. Let's pray right now. Hallelujah. We need a breakthrough in the Holy Ghost. Let it start with us right now. Hallelujah. If you're sick in your body today, I want you to come and I want you to have these elders to lay hands upon you. The Bible says to call for the elders of the church. To pray for the sick. If you're sick in your body, you need to come and have an elder pray with you. In the name of Jesus. If you have, if your strength is not there, if you're not sure what's going on in your body, you're concerned, you need to come and have an elder pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, step right up here to an elder. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on by faith. In the name of Jesus. Come on by faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, healing virtue would flow right now. Heal, I pray. Heal, I pray. I command sickness and disease to flee, to disappear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I command it. I command tumors to go in the name of Jesus. I command every symptom to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe the doctors don't know what's going on. But I rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus right now. Heal, I pray.
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let healing virtue flow right now in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, Halabokia Satamahaya. Ileamono Koye la Mahaya. Sola Makaya Ramoho Sataya. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Lord Church. Let's thank the Lord for healing right now. Let's thank the Lord for healing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shalom Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want the praise team to sing one more song, the old just hallelujah song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know it's shifting gears a little bit here right now, but I want to walk in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
your hands unto the Lord today. He deserves our highest praise. He deserves our highest praise. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. be sensitive to the Holy Ghost today. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Many, many, many years ago, somebody got a hold of a recording of a frequency that wasn't radio frequency. Somehow had been able to record it, and it sounded like the heavenly host, and they were singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you for being at First Pentecostal today. On this Memorial Weekend, we greet you in Jesus' name. We want you to know if you're visiting that we are a Pentecostal church. We are Pentecostal from generation to generation. And we are just so delighted that you have chosen to worship with us on this weekend. It's such a joy once again to have Brother and Sister Foster Sr. They've been away for several weeks. It hasn't been the same. Amen. So glad that they are recovering from and regaining their health. And Mama Victoria, we're so glad you came back. Amen. I told her last week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, this past few days, I just told her, I said, I, I just don't, church ain't right if you're not there. And that's how I feel about all of you. Amen. And it's a joy to be here. Let me just uh, give you just another couple of quick updates real quickly. Next Sunday, we are going to have a miracle service. And uh, Bishop Hanscom and Sister Hanscom are going to be here. And uh, they are launching their new book called Miracle. And you are going to be the first to have the opportunity to purchase a copy and have it signed by the bishop. Amen. And uh, when they come here, uh, you know, my father, my father is a, he's an office guy. He spent hours and hours in the office. I'm, I'm not so much an office guy. <laughs> but he's been working on this book, all of his experiences from the mission field and his ministry. And now it's finally on page, pages of this book. And uh, they're picking it up this week from the printer in Indianapolis and going to bring it here. And this is the first stop of their uh, book 
tour, if you would call it that, and they're going to be promoting that book. So we're going to have a great time in the Lord next Sunday uh, here. Uh, when, when we have Brother Hudson come, we've had him here before, a great evangelist. Very excited about him coming back. And uh, that's going to be the weekend of the 27th. The 27th is a Sunday, but we've asked him to come and preach on Friday, the 25th. So we're going to have three services with Evangelist Hudson. That's going to be on Friday the 25th and twice on Sunday the 27th. And uh, you need to come. You need to be here. And uh, God greatly uses Brother Hudson in filling people with the Holy Ghost through his ministry. And so I believe we're going to see a dozen or more people receive the Holy Ghost for the first time that weekend. And so you need to be thinking about who you're going to bring with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a very special weekend, Memorial Weekend, and uh, we want to uh, especially honor those who have uh, died for our freedom, uh, the freedoms that we have here in uh, America, and uh, it is uh, not something that we should take lightly. We want to remember their sacrifice. Now, a little bit about Memorial Day. Um, Memorial Day uh, honors the U.S. citizens who have died in wars fighting for our freedom that we enjoy here on the homeland. Memorial Day was originally set aside to honor those that died in the Civil War. And then later it was expanded to include all those citizens who have died in any uh, war defending the United States. The national observance of Memorial Day is marked by the placing of the wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier in the Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. The purpose of this holiday is for the remembering and the placing of flowers upon the graves, the tombstones of comrades who have died in defense of our country. It's a holiday for us to simply remember the price that has been paid for freedom. Amen. Are you glad to be free? Amen. Can we clap our hands for freedom today? Amen. You know, a lot of these holidays, they are just a day off or a weekend, uh, a vacation or a 96. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right. But, you know, you need to sometimes take the time to sit down and think about the holidays. Talk about it with your family. Our freedoms are being encroached upon. And uh, they may not, we may not have all the freedoms we have today for very long. But while we have them, we want to remember how we receive them. In Washington, D.C., there stands the monument it's called the Lincoln Memorial. And it honors President Abraham Lincoln and the virtues of tolerance and honesty and faithfulness in the human spirit. That m monument was designed by Henry Bacon on a plan similar to that of the Parthenon in Athens. The structure of the Lincoln Memorial includes 36 columns, each 44 feet high, made out of Colorado marble. They surround the building, one, on each, one for each state that comprised the Union in Lincoln's time. Inside the memorial, there sits a colossal 19-foot seated statue of Abraham Lincoln that is made out of Georgia white marble. It sits on a pedestal of Tennessee marble and was designed 
by Daniel French and carved by some brothers from New York. The statue dominates the interior and looks eastward across the reflecting pool at the Washington Monument and Capitol. On the south wall is inscribed Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, and on the north wall, his second inaugural address. Above, there are two paintings that represent, first, the union and progress, and second, the emancipation of a race. Cornerstone of that monument was laid in 1915 and completed on Memorial Day, 1922. We have the Lincoln Memorial to help us remember what a great man Abraham or President Lincoln was, to help us remember the things that he accomplished while he was alive. And that's what a memorial does. It helps keep a memory of something significant that has happened alive in our hearts and our minds. There are many, many monuments throughout the Word of God. God ordained that there would be memorials in the Scriptures. There are statues. There are buildings that were memorials. There are crosses that are memorial. There are individuals who are, uh, the acts that they did was made as a memorial to us. God instituted the practice of building and having memorials in our life. It's beneficial for us to have memorials when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River, they were to take a big stone out of the Jordan River from the center and they placed it and built a memorial on the side so that every time the Israelites would look at that pile of stones, it wasn't just a pile of stones, it was a memorial about how God had brought them through. You and I, we have memorials in our walk with God that we look back to and if it wasn't for the grace of God, we, were, we don't know what kind of person we would be. But in the biblical sense, a memorial is a sacrifice. It's a monument or an event that brings us into remembrance of something that God has done. The word memorial in Scripture comes from the word that means to prick or to pierce, or to penetrate the memory. That's what we call jogging our memory. You got to prick it sometimes to remember what took place. The Bible says that the memory of the righteous is a blessing. It also says that the memory of the wicked perish from the earth. Memorials are to aid man's memory in preserving what he cherishes the most. The Scripture talks about the first Passover. It was a memorial to the Jewish people forever. It served to remind them of how when the death angel came, that it passed over and the firstborn was saved of those homes that had the blood to cover them. Thank God for memorials. Thank God for memorials. And I thank God for the United States of America. Praise God. We are hated by many, many people, but everybody wants to come. <laughs> In my opinion, the problem occurs when they come wanting our freedom, but they bring their religion, their gods, and uh, they try to make us what they left. That's a problem with me, anyways. That's my opinion. Praise God. But freedom is worth fighting for, and freedom is not free. And we thank every service man or woman, alive or dead that have made an ultimate sacrifice for our freedom to be able to come and worship here today. 
I was, in 1989, I was on mainland China in a hotel room with about 15 young Chinese uh, people, and we were having church and worshiping, and they couldn't clap, and they couldn't shout hallelujah, they couldn't lift their hands, and every single noise that they heard in the hallway shut everything down that we were doing for fear that a secret service person would come through the door and would arrest them. But you and I, we have come here today to worship Jesus. So I encourage you, don't go home without exercising your right to worship Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the things that we haven't questioned, we haven't been worried about in so many years are now something to worry about. You know, um, my family lives in Canada. The freedom to worship has never been an issue. And today, they're arresting pastors and they're putting fences Not one fence, but four fences around churches that are worshiping in spite of what the health care people are saying. And they're paying a price, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, But freedom of worship has never been an issue in Canada. Never. People have come from all over the world to have freedom to worship. And now it's being, it's in jeopardy. So we need to pray, amen, that God would help us to appreciate it while we have it. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles today, I want to turn your attention to the book of Romans, chapter number 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 21, if you stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. It says in verse 21, what fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and becoming servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you pray that God would help his word to penetrate the heart that needs it today? Would you pray with pastor for an anointing, not only in the pulpit, pray for an anointing on the pulpit, but a point, an anointing in the chairs, in your aisle, in your row. Let's pray together right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we can't do anything without you. We don't want to even try. We know that if we try to do it of our own strength and our own Ability, it's going to fail. We don't have time to play games here today. We don't have time to go through the motions. We want a work of God to be accomplished in our hearts and lives before we leave here today. We ask for your anointing, and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you a message that I've entitled, Is Recovery Possible? Is Recovery Possible? I've had some different thoughts about Memorial Day weekend. When I was thinking about this congregation, 
I know that there are individuals here today that have served the military overseas, have seen some horrific things. Probably there are more things that you wish that you could forget rather than remember. I have friends that can't sleep at night. When the lights go out, the memories flood in. And their past follows them wherever they go. There is no relief to be found. A lot of people, because of the stress of those memories, have even taken their own lives, trying to escape the memories that haunt them. I want to tell you today, I want to give you a message of hope. When I ask the question, is recovery possible? I believe that recovery is possible. Amen. Not by man's ability, but by the power of God that is able to work in your life if you will give him the opportunity. Is recovery possible? The handwriting was shaky. The stationery lined with loose leaf paper. The ink was black and the tone was desperate. The note dated February 6, 1974 and addressed to the U.S. government. The note said, I am sending $10 for blankets I stole while in World War II. My mind would not rest. I'm sorry I'm late. It was signed an XGI. Then there was this postscript. I want to be ready to meet God. This recruit was not alone in his guilt letter. His guilt letter is one of literally tons of letters that have been sent to the U.S. government since it began collecting and storing the letters in 1811. Since that time, more than three and a half million dollars have been deposited in what is called the Conscience Fund. An average of 45,000 letters per year are received. The biggest year was in 1950, they received 350,000 letters. One man writing from Brazil sent $50 to cover the cost of two pair of Calvary, uh, Calvary boots, two pairs of trousers, one case of KC rations, and 30 pounds of frozen meat that he had stolen from the army between 1943 and 1946. In some instances, the amount are small, only the remorse was big. One Colorado woman sent in two eight-cent stamps to make up for having used one stamp twice. A former IRS employee mailed in one dollar for four ballpoint pins that she had never returned to the office. One man from Salem, Ohio, submitted one dollar with the following note. He said, when I was a boy, I put a few pennies on the railway tracks and the train would flatten them. He said, I also used a dime or a quarter in a silver coating experience, experiment in high school. He said, I understand that there is a law against defacing money. I have not seen it, but I desire to be a law-abiding citizen. Imagine anxiety over a 30-year-old mistake. Regret over mashed pennies. 
If the struggle to have a clean conscience wasn't so common in the letter that was received, it would be funny. But I'm here to tell you that the, the struggle is very common. People do not have a clear conscience. They are not able to rest. Their lives are turned upside down by the memories and the things of their past, the failures and the regrets and the disappointments of yesterday haunt them today and Memorial Weekend. We find out we've got a good remember, but we oftentimes don't have a good forgetter. We find out that those memories that we wish that we could forget seem to just come up to the top when we're trying to remember other things of value. I spoke to the elders this morning of a scripture in Genesis 41 and verse 15, 51 where Joshua, uh, Joseph, he uh, was looking at his firstborn son, Manasseh, and he said, God hath finally taken away the memory of my past. All the things that had haunted him, all the, the times that he had remembered how his brothers had uh, thrown him in a pit and had sold him into slavery and how he'd been at Potiphar's house and then how he'd been falsely accused and how he'd been thrown into prison and then how he'd been forgotten and left there to die. All of those memories he had tried for years to push out of, out of his way, but finally, amen, having his firstborn son, he was able to forget all those things and leave those things behind. I'm telling you what needs to happen here today is for somebody to be reborn, someone to be born again, amen, in order for you to leave those past memories behind, amen, to ask God, amen, to cover that past with the blood of Jesus and knowing that his blood covers a multitude of sins. This morning, I know that I'm preaching to human beings today. Hey, man, you might not be thinking about a regret so far back as 30 years. You might just be thinking about yesterday. You might be thinking about uh, this past week. Uh, you might be thinking about how you fell on your face. You tried so hard, but yet you still fell. And you're wondering, is God ever going to forgive me? Is it possible for me to come back, amen, from this failure? I'm here to tell you that recovery is possible. <laughs> so what do we do with our failures? Our mistakes come to us like pebbles, small stones that serve as souvenirs of our stumbles. We carry them in one hand and soon our hand is full. We put them in our pocket and soon our pocket is bulging out. We place them in a sack and put them over our shoulder and we carry those memories and those failures and those disappointments and those regrets with us everywhere we go. Soon, there is a bag of yesterday's failures that is so heavy, you can't carry it. You have to drag it around. And nothing drags more stubbornly than a sack of failures. Could you just be able to do it over again? You would do it differently. You would be a different person. You would be more patient. You would be more in control. You would control your tongue. You'd finish what you started. You'd turn the other cheek instead of slapping his. You'd be honest. You'd resist temptation. You'd run with a different crowd. But you can't undo what's already been done. What you did cannot be undone. That's why the Apostle Paul, this is what he meant when he said the wages of sin is death. He didn't mean and he didn't say the wages of sin is just a bad day or a bad mood. He said he didn't say that the wages of sin is depression. He went all the way and he said the wages of sin is death. 
I'm telling you, you can carry around your bag of regrets and sack of failures, amen, until the day that you die. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Woo! If you don't deal with that sack of memories and failures in eternity, all you're going to have is your memory. But there is recovery today in the house of the Lord. There is the possibility of renewing your mind. There is a possibility of saying goodbye to yesterday and hello to the promises of God. Paul said the wages of sin is death. If sin is fatal, can anything be done about it? Well, just go talk to your therapist about it. So you pull your bag into his office. You open it up and you pour out the stones and you lift each one up and you describe. This was a failed marriage. This was many failed times. I tried to quit drinking alcohol, doing drugs, and prescription drugs fornicating and adultery and breaking the speed limit. Hey, it's in there. <laughs> Amen. So we talk about them for hours. Oh, it, it feels, feels good to share. But you know, at the end of that hour, Scoop those stones back up, pebbles, and put them back in the bag. We pick up our bag and we carry it with us. Some people say, well, don't feel so bad. Everybody has their own sack. Everyone slumps a bit, a bit in this world. You can go to a feel-good rallies that tell you just ignore it. Be happy. Don't worry. You know, that works until you're all alone again. And all you have is your memories. The pain and the remorse come flooding back in. There could be some legalist that would tell you, well, all you got to do is just do good deeds. The religious crowd may tell you, well, just go burn some candles for every rock that's in your bag. Pray about every pebble. But is that the real answer? I'm talking about what you've been dragging around for your whole life. What do we do with those stones from life's stumbles? Shall we continue in sin? The Bible says that grace may abound. God forbid. I'm telling you, God, it hurts God, amen, with the notion that there is no recovery, amen, because he came to provide, amen, a new way of living, amen. He takes out that stony heart, amen, and he doesn't just fix it up and put it back in there, but he replaces it and he puts a heart of flesh in that, in that place where that stony heart was. He goes so far to say, behold, all things are new. All things are passed away. Hallelujah. If you came in here dragging your bag of failures, amen, I've come to tell you that recovery is possible. Amen. God wants to lighten your load today in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, church. You don't have to go walking around all bent over with the weight of sin on your. But the Holy Ghost, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul wrote about things that were, you were ashamed about. He said, those things are going to lead you to death, but it doesn't stop there. Woo! He doesn't stop there when he says that the wages of sin is death, but he says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm here to tell you that your failures are not fatal. Your failures are not final. If you come to Jesus Christ, you'll be able to take that sack of bad memories and leave them at the foot of the cross. And you'll be able to pick up a new memory to take with you today. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. The Holy Ghost is calling somebody that you came way down with sin, way down with the cares of life. You said, th- this is my last ditch effort. Hey, Amen. To get some relief. I'm telling you. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come again. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to send the comforter. The comforter is going to come in my name. And when he comes, hallelujah, he's going to give you a new life. He's going to give you a new start. You got a new beginning in life. You'll be able to write like the Apostle Paul who says such were some of you. Amen. One day you were an adulterer. One day you were habitual in whatever it was. But one day you came to an altar. You came to an old-fashioned altar. And the blood of Jesus. There's power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood, in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden and strife? There's power, power in the blood. Hey, come on, hallelujah. God wants to give you the opportunity to even erase yesterday. Uh, Bible talks about a rich man. When he died, he looked up to heaven. Amen. And all he had was his memories. Remember Lazarus, uh, remember that, that old beggar, he had his memories, amen, and they were there, his memories for his life, uh, and amen, God even said to you in your good days had your good stuff, your good memories, all of that, amen, I'm telling you the things of this world, amen, they are not going to satisfy you in eternity, they are just a weight, they are just a weight, the Bible says to lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. But the Bible tells us for those who have been redeemed, for those who have been bought with the blood of Jesus, for those who have been filled with the Spirit, amen, one day he said, I'm going to wipe all the tears from your eyes. We're never going to remember, amen, that those things anymore. We're never going to cry another time. There's never going to be another sleepless night over some regret that we had. Jesus is the answer. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
Jesus is the answer. He's going to ignite your forgetter today. He's going to give you the ability, amen, to lay aside your past. Lay aside those regrets. Why do you think that there's a scripture in the Bible that says, surely goodness and mercy shall fo follow them all the days, brother. <laughs> and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My past has no right to weigh me down in the house of the Lord. my bag of pebbles and stones they don't have any right to drag me down in the presence of the Lord because in his presence there's fullness of joy at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore <laughs> There's a Holy Ghost work being done here right now. Coming to Jesus is better than going to any therapist. The remedy in the Word of God is better than the remedies of this world. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What's the remedy? What? What? what how can I recover? It's through Jesus through Christ alone through Jesus Christ the Lord is recovery possible yes I tell you I guarantee you that the word of God today that there is recovery for you it's the devil that wants you to have your sins weighed upon you but it's the Lord that wants you to have your past eradicated. Would you stand with Pastor right now? Where does God put our past? In the sea of His forgetfulness. How deep, how wide is that sea? As far as the east is from the west. That's how far away he wants to remove you from your past and from your sins and your regrets and your disappointments. You know what God says about your sins? He says, if you put your sins under my blood, he says, I will remember them no more. I will remember them no more. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know who came, carried the weight of this, of their life upon their shoulders today but I want to tell you that if you ask Jesus to forgive you if you ask Jesus to cleanse you he will 1 John tells us that God is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins cleanse us 
Cleanse us from all. There's the Holy Ghost is talking here in this place right now to your heart. Would you step out from where you're standing? Would you come down to this altar? We haven't come to beat you up with your failure and your past. We'd like the chance to pray with you. When you lay that heavy burden down at the foot of the cross, don't pick it up again. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Hallelujah. Would you come to the altar of the day? Would you come and give God a chance? Would you ask Him to deal with that sack of failures that you brought with you to church? You ask Jesus, He'll put His arms around you. He's not ashamed of you. Things in your life that you are ashamed about it doesn't make God not love you. You're exactly who Jesus died for. You're exactly who Jesus shed his blood for our sins are like scarlet but they shall be white as wool we can be forgiven we can have our slate clean God will erase he will cover your past even God won't be able to see your past when it's covered by his blood would you come and lift your heart and your hands to Jesus today Maybe where you're just where you're standing, if you hesitate to come to the front, maybe you just right where you're standing, you just look to Jesus right now in the name of the Lord. Oh, he has the power of recovery in his hands. He has the power of forgiveness. They asked Jesus, who can forgive sins but God? He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Come on now. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cover your heart. Ask him. Ask and you shall receive. Come on, pray with somebody near you. Pray with somebody that's near you right now. Come on. Oh, pray with somebody that's close to you right now. Jesus, wash me. Jesus, wash my heart. Jesus, I need you to help me. Oh, the forgiveness of the Lord is here today. He wants to forgive you of every sin, every sin in your heart. Hallelujah. If you're standing near somebody and they're praying, why don't you pray with them right now? 
husband and wife, if you're standing near each other, you need to pray with one another. Hallelujah. If your husband, your wife can get rid of that old bag of shame, they're going to be a better husband. They're going to be a better spouse. Hallelujah. God wants to forgive you no matter what you've done. He wants to forgive you and to cleanse you. He's merciful. Today he is not standing in judgment. He stands with mercy in his wings. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, ask him. Go ahead and ask him to forgive you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He can forgive. All right. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there's power to set you free. In the name of Jesus, there's glorious liberty over sin, disease, and sickness. Power to walk in liberty. Oh, yes, Jesus. God has a great forgetter. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Shalabaketamaya. Jesus name Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah oh God's mercy is flowing in this place his mercy is flowing hallelujah praise God praise God amen Hallelujah. Oh, seek the Lord while he may be found. Hallelujah. God is merciful. Hallelujah. He doesn't remember what you've asked him to forgive. Hallelujah. His spirit wants to give you power to never repeat those things again. He wants to give you the power to rise above those addictions, those habitual sins in your life. He wants to help break the curse of sin. He wants to give you freedom. He that the Son 
has made free is free indeed. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just before we're dismissed here right now, Mama Victoria is going to give a short testimony before we are dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 I've been sick for the last two months. And I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me he walked from us, what I had to do. I was so sick, I couldn't. I was deliriously sick. Hallelujah. And the Lord told me to repeat three songs. One, he told me to, to repeat the Lord's prayer every morning and every night. I couldn't pray, but all I could do was do what he told me to do. And then he told me, he said, say, uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. My rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The last song he gave me, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and enter his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. He told me to repeat that every morning and every night. I want to tell you, I did exactly what he told me. And every time I did it, he said, worship. He wants worship. And every time I worship him, things started coming up. Everything started coming up. I had a, a, a COVID pneumonia. Everything started coming up. And when I didn't do it, nothing came up. God wants us to worship him. Worship. Open your mouth and worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When we leave this house today, we will say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord with God and his people. May his light shine upon you. May he direct your path this week. Amen. In Jesus' name, bless you. Amen. Before you leave the sanctuary, I want you to try to tell at least three people that you love them and you're glad that they came to church to worship with you today. God bless you. Have a safe holiday in the name of Jesus.